Model Railroaders, once again it's Steve 87th, but I'm not going to be building on the shack. Instead, I found out that during a scratch build, if you don't have something that you need, guess what? You have to build that too. So today, I'm going to show you how I started and what I started doing to build my auger. All right. So now I'm going to start, and I'm going to do this a couple of different ways, I think. Um, I'm going to see which one I like the best as it comes out. But now I've got to come up and start doing um, the delivery system. So I've got this quarter-inch dowel or eighth-inch dowel, I think it is. That's uh, 0.187, so an eighth-inch dowel. Um, I also have brass, and so I'm not exactly sure which way I'm going to do it yet, which one I actually want to work. So I did a measurement on Google Maps and found out that the delivery tube is about 35 feet long. So I'm going to use that as my measurement. <laughs> So I'm going to see which is the best way to do this. Um, and I'm going to make two of them um, just because it's the better thing to do. All right. And it'll also give me uh, a little bit of extra items. And, and actually, um, at the site, there was actually two of these. But these are tractor-driven... Um, delivery systems so what I'm saying is is that these are meant to have an auger that goes through the middle of the pipes and that auger then delivers to the center of this thing underneath the railroad um, the material that's going to be used Okay. Now, I thought about using this smaller stuff, but it's going to be too big. So I am going to have to use some brass tubing. Now, I did find the brass tubing actually at my hobby store, which was kind of cool because Hobby Lobby carries an awful lot of different things. Um, and like I said, this is also an eighth. And so an eighth is only about a foot wide gives me about a foot wide. Not sure if that's the size that I want. But one of the other things that I found at my local hobby store, which I thought was really good. Let me see where they're at. Oh, here we go. Um, this hobby store works in a lot of different things. And one of the things it works in is little motors and gears and all that. So I was able to find this package of worm gear motors. So... If you look at a worm gear, right, that worm gear looks very much just like an auger bit. And there's a couple other ways I could do the auger bits and all that, but I'm thinking if I just use one of these, although this one's the nicest of all the augers, because it actually looks like an auger, rather than the other ones, which looks like more of gears. And then I got wheels, because these are actually on wheels. 
So I believe I'm gonna go ahead um, and make it out of brass. I think that'll be actually the better way to do it. So let me find out where my brass tubes went to and I will be back. Okay, so here we are a little bit later in the same day. So you heard I abandoned the wood. So I went and started making this nice, simple machine out of brass tubing. I mean, literally, look at it. How hard could it be? It's a frame. It's got a tube. It's got a couple of other little wires on it. it can't be that hard to make. So I, so I did take some detailed pictures so I could see a little bit more, but I wasn't going to go extremely detailed on this, right? I just wanted to see how most of it worked. So um, I decided that after I did the brass um, that I'd use kind of a wire for that top rotary section and all that kind of stuff. And um, once I got the wire, you know, once I did that, that I figured the other thing that I could do is I could use the wire as a frame. And then once I got the wire frame done and all that kind of stuff, I could actually solder all this stuff together because it was brass rather than use cyanoacrylic um, glue. So this is the start of building up the framework. Okay, everybody, so I'm back at it again. We're moving on with our uh, operations and getting things going. The building is sitting over there. I um, am not ready to do the insides of that because I have some other things to do. Yeah, for a little bit, this, I had to make to go underneath the tracks because in the real place there's a big concrete um, set of blocks that are underneath there that an auger um, an auger conveyor goes into. Uh, so where's my track at? I had a track. Here it is. So this you know, your normal spacing, your track and all that. And this actually fits in between two of the, the ties. And so what they did was, is they just took out one of these ties and sort of built this concrete bunker up for these other two ties to sit on, you know, so that the walls don't crush in and all that. And then that's what they dump the uh, fertilizer into. Well, in order to do that, they also have this big pipe sort of thing that goes down, which has an auger inside of it. And I'm using this brass tube because I found that that's probably the best thing to do because it's gonna be the easiest way for me to um, extract out what I need to because I'm actually gonna to have to do soldering for this uh, build, okay? So what happens is, is there's a big auger that goes all the way up here. And this is adjustable for its height and all that. And you, you see them at farms all over the place and all. So, well, there aren't, one, there isn't any commercial. Two, um, I wasn't allowed to use commercial builds for this. So like I said, this I just have to paint concrete. So I came out to my local hobby store and I found these motorized hobby parts, which are worm gears and things like that. Um, at Hobby Lobby. And so if you look, these are nice little worm screws, right, that look like an auger. Um, but when I went to go look at them and try to put them in here, which this is a fairly good sized piece of pipe, you can see that they don't fit, okay? So then I came up and I said, so what am I gonna do? I don't wanna sand these down. I don't wanna have to try to make one. So then I took my brass tube that I've cut. Now I've cut this to a length of, of 35 feet and then I cut another one to the length of 40 feet. Now my calculations say that this was 35 feet long. So what do I need to do? What I need to have, so the way that this works is there's an auger that goes all the way through this. Well I'm not going to put an auger all the way through, right? Because it's a model. So um, after looking at a bunch of things, I found this. All right, it is a brass wood screw, which will be sewed into there, but it goes inside without any problem. So now though, all I need to do is have it come out the top and out the bottom. So the fun times begin once again. 
we have to get out a little saw. Now, I've already kind of killed one saw blade, so I'll probably have to get some new saw blades. Because what we use is razor saws for this. Because they're the ones that'll do the best cutting. Um, and if you're wondering what I'm looking for, I'm looking for my square cut. There it is. I knew I was put it someplace. Um, I don't necessarily like this one because it's plastic. But, mm, let's see. How are we going to make this so I can get it to stay upright? Uh, need a little bit thicker than that. Yeah, that might work. Okay. So since you're only going to see two two ends of this, I need to go ahead and cut this. Um, make it right. So let me finish using this one. Maybe that will work better. Now in real life. You guys have seen auger bits, so you know how big it actually is. The inside loop is really small. Wow, it's going to take a lot. Okay. We are going to go to number two. Um, I already broke that. So, let me set up for number two, and I will go ahead and take care of this. All right. So... Part number two, can't cut it one way, cut it another way. So I'm gonna use this diamond tip cutter and this pair of pliers, and we are going to cut this screw up. Hopefully, so I'm not about to hold on to that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the video off because this is gonna be loud and noisy and all that, but you guys will get the idea. Alrighty then, so using my trusty Dremel, these are still a little hot. I was able to cut off the ends of these. So now we have, these are still hot, so that's why I pick them up this way. A nice little facsimile, a couple more. And so the funny thing is, I was thinking about how is it that I'm gonna put these in there? And I actually think the best way to do it is going to be to solder. Now, another thing that I was able to pick up at my little hobby store were these little wheels, which is kind of cool because I need wheels to be able to move this thing around. So I have to create a triangular kind of uh, setup as well to get this all done. So I'm going to clean these ends up after I clean up my workbench and then we're going to see what we do on their next adventure. Alrighty then, so there's a few things that I gotta do. I've gotta put this in there, and so kind of the way that this works, um, I also got myself a little um, trough, right? Rather than trying to cut this in half and cut it down and all that kind of stuff, I decided to make a square trough. So I've gotta cut these up real quick. Um, the funny thing is, the way that this actually goes is, is you'll have one trough that's down here so that it can pick up the items that are in there and then drive them up here. And then up on the other side, what you do is you have a trough here that goes like that so that the stuff will actually fall off over. So I've got to kind of cut this so that this comes out and goes down, okay? So um, we need to make a couple of cuts and then I don't really want to super glue this stuff together um, because super glue metals, it works, but it's not as good as a bonding agent. So instead, the bonding agent that I'm going to use is everybody's favorite modeling applicator that, that we all in model railroading love. Yeah, I'm going to solder these things together. I was also able to get some brass tubes from the same place. And these are 1 8 inch or 0 0.32, 0 0.032 size. Um, and the reason is, let me show you if I can get this open. 
I think I might have another one too that, that these actually go into. Um, I have got to make an axle. Oh, come on. Boy, these are kind of a pain in the neck. So, the way that this is supported is that it has a triangular item that kind of goes this way and this way with the um, axle in between them. So it's kind of a weird pyramid shapey thing with an eight foot axle in between them. So I'm gonna see if I have some other thin brass to put this through, because I think this might, or I have to get a bigger axle um, as well for these. So let me see what size. These are tiny wheels. And that's too big. But I think I have some other brass that I can use. But basically, we're going to bend this to the way that I need it to be for it to give it its angle and then bend it back over this way to hit it over there. And then we've got another piece that goes up there. So this is actually quite a few pieces that go together to make this. All right, well, let me walk you through this section. This is me starting the bend of the frame. So the first thing I did was is I took some of the brass wire that we had and just wrapped it around the pipe that you'll see the little hump in the end. Um, what I'm trying to do now is get an angle. So, so basically what happened was I bent it around the pipe and then after I bent it around the pipe, I pushed that section up to a 90 degree bend. Now that I have a 90 degree bend, I am attempting to get an angle set on the actual frame. So you see, I did the 90 degree bend um, and made the little angles come out and then I did another angle bend to bring it back in. Now that where that little diamond shape is in the middle, that's about eight feet, you know, it's about seven and a half to eight feet, which is where the tires are gonna be soldered onto. So it's at that connect point. So I did it all in one shot instead of separate pieces because it's less stuff to solder and it's actually gonna be stronger for the frame. So now what I'm trying to do is manipulate the right height and the right angle for the tube and then have it sit on the uh, tires okay so you can see here the bend around the top is the way that I'm going to attach the tube to the top there's a couple of ways I probably could have done it in the end but I just left the round portion of it because it, it actually made it as a good support section a little bit later um, so I didn't have to do as much support section stuff Okay, so now this is me fiddling around. So right there, you can see me setting the wheels, checking how the wheels are gonna work with the way that that's set up. Once I got how I felt that that angle would be at a good part, right? Um, there's a lot, a lot of finessing on this. Going back and forth, continuously bending and all that kind of stuff. Now, mind you, you see that I'm using straight edges as much as I can and all that. I don't have a little tiny bending machine. I don't even have like the flats. So you can see how, I, how I've kind of set this where it comes to an X underneath it. So now I know where those two points are gonna come up on the actual tube that holds the auger. Um, lots and lots of trial and error trial and error trial and error now why am i doing this out of brass well there's two reasons one um this is the build for jack jack's contest to where i can't use structural pieces this would have been easier to do in plastic because the plastic i you know you can get a plastic tube just like in the brass but then I could have actually used beams. I could have used I-beams or uh, L-girders or something like that to actually build each one of these pieces. It would have been more pieces. However, um, I could have, it would have been easier for me to actually cut them and, and make them a little bit, work a little bit more. So um, as I'm doing this, you can see, uh, within the last video I actually did do here's here's how I make that bend on that tube uh, I just put the tube in the middle I clamp the tube down 
Okay, so you can see that I've got one end and two ends. So, so on this one, it didn't come out quite the way that I wanted to. So I decided that I would go ahead and center the tube on an entire length of wire. Gives me more room to work with, okay? So I've got it down there, I've got it nice and clamped down. This now allows me to bend the wire up pretty much so that it's in half. So I bend it around the tube using the tube itself as, as how I'm bending it. And this is all brass, so it's not that hard to do. So you can see there, I just have to straighten it out a little bit, make sure that it's a, about right. And this is the tough, kind of a tough part, because I gotta make a 90 degree bend here on this. And it does help if you have, you know, more correct items to work with, like flat pliers and stuff like that, but I was just using what I had locally. Okay. So again, um, I'm doing the second machine. So this is the, so I remember I was building two machines. So this was the first one um, that I was working with on that side. And then this is the second one where I come up and actually um, are gonna work on the 45 footer, okay? So it's the same principle as the first one. You get that bend, but I forgot to show you guys how to do that the first time. I mean, I'm not gonna break these all up and turn them around. It's just easier. So I've got the bend in there. We've got the tube in. We kind of figure out where about that's gonna be so that um, um, so I can spread it out a little bit on either side. And we wanna to try to make these equal as best as possible. That's the biggest part of this. You make them equal. So now you've got this bent. Um, out. So now you take your wheels and you figure out where your eight foot is on your axle because basically it's just a tube with an axle running through it. So again it's a little piece of brass that's holding the wheels together inside another piece of brass tubing. Um, so the wheels will actually go around. So now I mark the two spots where I'm going to be able to put the axle and at that point I can bend them up right so you always whenever you're doing a bend it's you can't do the complex bends like you think so you bend them up so that you have your 90 and then you check everything seeing it's good yep i've got a long enough length the wheels are in the right place they're straight and you know it's sitting up the way that it's supposed to so now the next thing we have to do um, we bend it a little bit more, right? It's always, it's always on the bending. You have to just keep playing with it and bending it and bending it and bending it. Once I get that bend where I want it to be, now I take it and bend them in towards one another. So now you're actually twisting the metal while you're doing this. So this takes a little bit of time to get these right. Again, with plastic, you're gonna cut up more pieces to make this all happen, and you'll probably be doing some sanding or more cutting and all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, since I'm using all the brass, it makes it, it just makes it easier sometimes to just use the wires. We're not going for a detailed, high-grade model that somebody's gonna see. We want a representation, a representation of what I'm gonna be working with. Okay, so that's kind of the basics on how to do the A-frame. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys, besides doing this and that, there's another thing that has to be done. I went and cut these. So these are about, these are the bottom shoots, and they're about a half an inch, okay? So the thought is, is that these are going to go down there, um... You'll have an auger bit into the tray. I'm just going to show you. Into the tray, and then the it would screw it up. Obviously, that goes inside, not on the outside like I'm screwing it there. And that's how everything would travel on up, right? So this will kind of go over here like this um, and be a, be a tray for it. Okay, we're actually just going to do that one straight. However, up on the top, you have the same thing. You've got the, the screw that comes out, but you need to make sure that the stuff will drop down into its target. So in this case, we're gonna use it so that it has a target there. And then we'll also hang the motor off of here, which would actually do the driving, okay? So the way that I did that was, is I cut another one at a quarter of an inch, 
all right? And then about another mm, 3 16 of an inch, so I just put in a relief cut there. Now what you need to do is pull, and you've got to do these on, the, on this as well. You got to pull these over a little bit because the pipe needs to kind of sit in there flat and it doesn't, right? So you got to give it a little bit of room in there. So for me, I just simply take a couple of needle nose pliers, bend that out a little bit, and then come over and do it on the other side. It's the easier way to do it. Again, that's why it's nice to have the brass. Once you get it in there like that, then you can always, it's easier to bring them back in always than it is to um, continuously bring them out. Okay. And that'll just fit in there. And that'll be the little chute that goes down in there. Um, and we'll start, you know, we'll solder that and we'll solder that other one on. So these, let me just get this set done while I'm at it. Um, since everybody else is doing this. Move these out. Just need to be out a little bit. It's kind of the good thing about getting an angle that's about the same size as the pipe because the angle almost fits right in there. There we go. Those are done. See, it doesn't take much. Now these do the same thing. So you take the bigger side and you squish them out. Okay? I'm going to make sure that they're out far enough. And again, like I said, it's easy to bring them back in, so don't worry about how far you go out with those. Now, once you've got that done, then you want to take and make sure you're at that. So you just did a little bit of a score when you're cutting these, and then you just bend those up. Okay? So now you've got your directional dump as well. Okay? All this being done in brass. All right. Again, hard to do in plastic. Okay, so those are the basic pieces that I'm using to make this and or this type of prototype. So this is Steve87 saying thanks for watching and we'll continue on with this build.